this is really a principle that we want to talk about, which is less text and more graphics. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple of past examples as well um, and to see more about, about this and how it really can have an impact on your overall message. So here is an example of a poster that um, we have. So this student did, um, he, he put on different maps and he did put some figures on there, but I want to uh, point out to you a couple of things about this poster. So as you can see, it's, it's pretty wordy, even though it has figures. So let's count the blocks of text. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And some of the figures that he used, um, even, for example, up here, even were text heavy as well. So it continued to add to the overall message. So again, his project was really interesting, but it, um, it looks overly clunky um, in this layout. So let's look at another one. We had another student who, um, she has some really amazing photos um, in here. These are a close up of fish as part of her project. Um, but in, in this case, she did use some tables in it. And as you can see, we're not looking at any of the content now, but you can see that um, sort of the placement of her photos um, made, the, made it a little bit more challenging to read through. And you can see here, owing to this uh, rather large introduction, it sort of weighed the, the, the poster down a little bit. So let's look at this poster. So here we have a couple of things that this student did. So yes, they um, she did include a couple of larger blocks of text. So we have an abstract, which you guys won't have to worry about this for this year. Um, and the conclusion is rather large. But she did do a couple other things that really helped the reader along. One is this introduction. So she did have a rather large introduction, but she chose to space it out with bullets. Um, and also having some really um, appropriate sizes of spaces in between. And that way it really um, directed the reader through it better and sort of chunked out that introduction so you could take away the information that you would need. Also for the method section, she chose to space it out again. So she used numbers and she also used bullets to really draw the reader's eyes directly into those um, areas that she wanted you to know about. And then one of the most um, interesting things she did in her poster, among other things, right, but from a stylistic perspective, she created this, um, this infographic that essentially boiled down her methods into one image. And it basically made it so you could understand exactly what she was doing just from looking at that one graph or that one infographic. So that's a really um, interesting way that you could um, almost summarize your methods. She also included photos of herself in the field to help you understand more what she did. And then for her results, she chose to not have any um, summary, uh, but just having um, graphics there. And then another student who, um, his project was uh, only a service learning project, or a, not only, but he didn't have a research component. He chose to almost do away with the other um, headings so he chose his his own headings lots of photos and he was making a kiosk so he in, um, included the different panels um, that he used so this is a, a way to almost do away with text and really just focus on what um, what he did yeah the only uh, plus that or the only um, improvement that we would have liked to see is a conclusion section of some sort next steps. Um, but other, other than that, this is a great poster. So some takeaways we want um, you to focus on for this section. Um, so for your poster, we want you to be clear and concise. And that means that you can use uh, bullets instead of paragraphs. Um, you can see here we chose um, a major bullet, and then we had a second bullet um, down. And that shows it's a sub-bullet sub to um, make you understand that it's a it's attributed to the first bullet, but it's a, it's a separate idea. Um, also using incomplete sentences is fine. So maybe in um, one of your papers or essays, you're getting harped on um, for uh, having specific grammar, um, but we want you to, uh, you know, yes, include proper grammar, but incomplete sentences are fine. And then condensed descriptions as well. So you can use units, 
um, unit abbreviations and other abbreviations to help you save on space. One question we have is, do we want a very scientific title or more general? We're gonna leave that up to you, but one thing we wanna focus on with the title is to make sure that it's eye-catching and accurate. So, um, so a title that just says, um, you know, my, co my CAP project, that doesn't really tell anyone what the content of the title is. So if you are working on invasives, you might say, um, you could have a more uh, creative title to the left of a colon, Sometimes posters use colons, so you could say, um, fighting for our nature, colon, uh, you know, removing invasive species on a specific area of land. Something like that um, would be good. And then also Tori had another question that I forgot to um, address earlier, and it was if we could use uh, an image as the background. Um, Yes, and students have done this and researchers do this. Um, just be careful that it's not too busy and that it's a high resolution photo. Um, you don't want something that's going to be blurry. Um, you don't want something that's going to be distracting, that you can't read the text. Um, I would also encourage you using uh, text boxes that are solid color so that we can read the, the wording. Okay, so our next um, part. So going along with what Laura just said, we want to select images that will attract an audience. So for the images that you're putting on, we want them to be high quality. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, we're going to go in here and I have just a little example. So here we have, let's say we're doing a project on birds. From viewing um, the, the, the poster as it is right now, these photos look really nice. They're high quality. They're aligned properly. Uh, but I want to draw your attention to something. So here down in the bottom, again, we mentioned before um, that our slide is four feet by three feet, or in some cases, three by, feet by two feet. So these are huge. And you'll see that this poster is zoomed out to 21%. So when you zoom in to 100%, you're, you're going to see if your photos maintain the quality that you think that it has. So let's do that. All you'll do is click on this bar. You'll slide it over to the middle and we'll get it to 100%. And this will show, that's close enough. Mm -hmm. So this will show you, this is how large your figure will actually show up when you're in person looking at it. So remember those bird photos. Let's take a look and see if they maintain their integrity. So you'll see that this one is, it's pretty good, but it is a little bit fuzzy. We have this robin that um, actually almost has a halo of um, fuzziness around it and the, the grass is all blurred out. And then this one is much worse. You'll see it looked very clear, but it you, you can't really see the background. There's a lot of fuzziness around it. But let's go over to the other one. I'll zoom out again for a second. This photo maintained its integrity all the way to 100%. It's very crisp and you can see that it's still great. So that's what we mean by selecting. Um, sorry, that's what we mean by selecting high quality photos. And then also feel free to use figures to describe your methods, um, and that will can save space um, in a lot of ways too. So let's talk about. Um, so in some cases, you might want to have some methods that exactly describes what you're going through. But let's read this. So instead of this, over the course of a period of time spanning from the month of August through the month of December, we sampled along the length and width of the East Meadow Brook throughout various different towns and municipalities. First of all, that paragraph is excessively wordy and we can pare it down a lot. So instead of that paragraph, what if you tried this? From August through December 2017, seven sites were sampled along the East Meadow Brook and then you have a call to figure one. And you have figure one be your map with seven different sites all along it. And something that you could even do to make this figure even more, um, uh, even better, is you could put a little photo of yourself here sampling the length and width of uh, the stream. So th that's a way um, that you can really pare down your words and really put an emphasis more on figures. And then you'll also notice that I included a bullet point, so I turn the paragraph into bullet point form. 
So next we're gonna talk about, um, for our third tip, we'll talk about telling your story. So we're gonna get a little bit cheesy right now and say that your poster is really a story and you want that story to speak for itself and sort of leap off the page. So all good stories have a beginning, middle, and an end. And with your poster, your story is going to tell your audience why they should care about an issue, what you did, what you discovered, and what you recommend. So with the beginning. So for the beginning, in our template, we gave you some suggestions. You may choose introduction. You may call it the background information, the motivation of your work what issues your work is addressing, the goals you're gonna address, objectives, significance or importance of your work. There's so many um, different labels you could give this beginning and really don't let what we put in the template inhibit you in any ways, change that up. But the beginning is always going to have one thing in common, no matter what you call it. It's going to tell Joe Schmo on the streets why he or she should care about your work. And it's gonna provide the proper background that they need to know to understand the importance of your work. So that's, those are the really, the, the two things that need to be in that beginning. No matter what you call it, you need to sell your project. Why should someone care? This is really important in today's um, uh, society, science communication. And not everyone's going to have the same passions as you. They may not be into as into birds as you are or as into water as you are or understand the importance. So you really need to tell them why this importance to them is important to them or should be important to them. So just like an essay, we will structure this um, section um, like an inverted triangle, but this doesn't have to be paragraphs. Remember, we can use bullet points, we can structure this in short sentences, but it's it's gonna have the same structure. So your your first statement or whatever you say in this in this section is going to uh, tell the reader the broad overarching problem. So this may be a global or regional problem. Why should anyone care? Um, so, for example, if, you're, if your project is on conserving certain uh, land trust property because there's a migrating bird species that visits that property, um, well, why should anyone care? You might want to start that section off with uh, talking about biodiversity loss, how this loss is occurring ten or a thousand times faster than um, pre-human um, times. And a lot of this is due to land use. You can talk about land use issues um, in land development. And then talking about why biodiversity is important. Then you might want to bring this more specific to your town or your region. Um, so what is locally happening? Is there more development that's happening? Um, what issues do we not have information on that your project will address? and then you can get to the specific objectives of your project, um, telling them what you seek to do for your project. So do not start your beginning like this. I did this project because I really like birds or I really like to go outside. Also, don't start your, your beginning like this. I conducted this project because the organization I'm working with told me to do so. Um, that may be true, but that's not how we're starting this. You need to really rope someone in. And then finally, don't tell, don't give away your methods. Don't say, I did this, 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 and this for my project. That stuff goes in the methods. This is in the introduction. You need to, again, tell someone why your work is important. So in the CTP um, templates, I provided three sections that are pretty much your beginning. In the CAP template, there's just one big introduction section. Um, this is up to you guys. You can use these three sections, or if you have the CAP one, you can break that one section into multiple sections. Um, it's, it's free reign like we discussed before. So don't be inhibited by the template. So for the middle, 
um, this, this part of your poster is really um, addressing what did you do to complete your project. So the physical aspects of what you did for your project. Um, some sections that could be called methods, could be called the sampling technique, could be called procedures or phase one. It could also be called what are invasive, or it could be, yeah, it could be called what are invasives or the brochure or the activity book. Um, so really it's up to you to determine what you want to call your middle section. And here, this is just a, a, this is what it looks like on the cap poster. But yeah, feel free to change up this materials and methods to something that fits your project better. So, sorry, being more descriptive is going to draw on your audience. Exactly. So some do's for your middle. Concisely convey how you completed your project. And so that, I, I just want to remember or remind you that some things can actually be spoken instead of needing to put every single detail on your poster. So remember, you're going to be standing in front of your poster describing your project. So you might be able to get away with not in including everything as long as it makes sense. Um, you can also use visual aids instead of text. And I'll remind you about that one infographic that we saw. So again, this student essentially boiled down her whole methods into this infographic. So think about ways that you can maybe do that in your methods or in your middle section. Um, also use bullets or numbers, and so that way you can guide your reader through um, and break up uh, blocks of text to make it easier to see. And then also include photos of you in the field actually doing the protocol. And if you didn't work in the field, um, uh, an example of you in the computer lab um, working on your interactive map, anything like that works. Or if you did smartphone technology, a photo of you using your smartphone. And if you did not take those photos while you're out there, you still have time. It's not snowing out there. So get out there and just pretend. <laughs> take lots of photos. So for some do not, uh, do not interpret your results in, uh, in the method section or in the middle section. That's really where you are telling specifically what you did. Uh, do not write in paragraphs. Remember, we want to have ease of reading for your um, poster attendees. And also do not begin with the first thing that I did, did was, the second thing that I did was, right? So we wanna make it, that's excessive text and you don't even have to include it. Just start off with the, those bullet points. All right, the end. So there's typically two sections that are devoted to the end of your story, of telling your story. The, it's the results, the, the products or the outcomes, the conclusions, recommendations, future directions, next steps, implications. Um, so generally we have two sections that, so we have uh, results or products or outcomes, and then we'll have this uh, other section, which is really flexible depending on your project. You may want to talk about, if you don't have a research project, you may want to talk about next steps of your project or recommendations for conservation issues or conservation policy. So we'll talk about that. So first we'll talk about that results or products section. So dues for this are include lots of figures. In some cases, like one of our students that we showed, it was the section only had graphs and that was great. You don't need text necessarily except for the figure legends. Um, so you can include graphs, your interact, uh, interactive maps, your maps, your pictures of whatever product you may have, links to websites, etc. If you'd like to provide some text, that's great also, but make sure that it's a bullet point of main takeaway from, from the figures. Don't repeat the information that's already captured in your graphs. Don't. So we would like you to avoid tables. Sometimes a table is necessary. Um, and so if you can't figure out how to display your results in any other way, a table is fine, but um, it's best practice to try and avoid including tables because it just adds to the text. Um, do not include results that of something that you did not describe in your methods. And this happens a lot. Um, you, it, it happens to everybody. We'll include some results that we forgot to describe the approach that we use to collect 
that in the methods or the middle section. So if that happens, all you need to do is go back to your middle section and add that um, information about how you collected that, that data. And finally, don't interpret your results. Interpretation of your results goes into the conclusions. In the results section, you're merely stating what you found. You're not interpreting it. So I wanted to show you an example of some good graphics used for results. So you can interweave maps and show the data and graphs that you found at certain sites. You can also include um, a lot of pictures of uh, your study organisms or organisms that had impacts on your on your results. So that's this is just one example. So finally, the last part of telling your story is this um, ambiguous section that you can really make your own. Um, it can be about the conclusions or recommendations or next steps. So I put some potential do's here. So if you have a typical research project, you should interpret your results. What does that mean? What are the implications of that for conservation or management? How does it inform those, those policies? If you don't have a typical uh, research project, that's fine. You, you can discuss how your product or what you did benefited the community. Another great way to end this section is to provide future directions. So if someone is really interested in your project and really interested in doing that on with their land trust or their conservation organization and they want to pick up where you left off, providing them some feasible directions as to where to go next is a great um, way to end your telling your story. One don't, do not repeat your results. So um, do not restate what was already in your results section. So tip number four is make it 3D. And this is really a bonus um, section to, it's up to you know your discretion. If you have a project that uh, would benefit from this, then by all means, but if, if not, that's no problem. This is just sort of a bonus to show you um, another option. So your story can live off the page. <laughs> so um, here's one example. We had a student who was looking at urban forestry and the economic benefits of, of trees within urban parks. And he actually was able to create a, uh, an artisanal bench uh, from a tree that fell in a park. And so he decided that he wanted to bring that bench to show at um, CCNR. So here is his poster above it and the bench is right below. And this bench attracted a lot of attention. Um, so much so that he was able to present um, his poster and his bench at City Hall. And then the bench is currently installed in a city park, uh, which is a pretty cool uh, outcome of his project. Um, another student, um, a number of you have actually used these uh, macroinvertebrate field ident identification cards, um, and a CAP student was instrumental in creating some of these, uh, these field cards. And so this gives you an idea of how far of a reach your project really can go. Um, so this student, he had his normal poster, but then he also had a little display of the different field identification cards set up next to his um, poster. So that's an option as well. We had another student who was really interested in, or their project revolved around plant diseases. And so they actually brought in living specimens. So they brought in some fungal isolates. They also brought in uh, living uh, plants that were infected with um, uh, an organism and other examples and photos. So, um, you know, if you have something that you can bring in, that that's a great um, option as well. And we also had a student who had a bat project and she developed a how-to guide um, for installing bat houses and um, informing citizen science programs. And so she brought in her, um, her, her how-to guide as well as a sample bat house for people to see. So if you want to um, have a 3D component of your poster, that's a wonderful idea. Um, just make sure that you tell either Laura or myself um, just so we can properly plan uh, the space for your poster. So we have a question from Vishal, which is, can we try to bring in some type of activity for people to try? I'd say that's a, that's a great idea um, and definitely something that we can work through and think about. One thing I don't want to have happen is have that 
become um, a replacement for talking about your poster. Um, so, but definitely, Vishal, if you want to talk more about that, I'm happy to see how we can figure that out. That's a great idea.